Again, this week's reflection is based on the set reading for Sunday. This time it's Luke chapter 24 and it's verses 36 to 48. The story told is the same story as we read last week in John, how Jesus appeared in a locked room on the evening of his resurrection. It's the same as the Gospel of John, but there are some quite interesting differences. One of the same things, though, was the fear and the disbelief. Luke says that Jesus appeared and they were frightened and they thought they were seeing a ghost. And so Jesus showed them his scars of his hands and his feet and sort of said to them, look, ghosts don't have flesh and blood like he obviously did, flesh and bones. And then it says they still didn't believe, but this time they knew it was Jesus, but they just couldn't believe it. It was their joy and their amazement. It was just too good to be true. And I think sometimes we have that sense that we hear some news and it's just so wonderful that we think, no, it can't possibly be. It's just too good to be true. What finally convinced them was that Jesus ate a piece of fish. and Ghosts don't eat. And so this was no apparition. This was Jesus returned in bodily form, although he was different. Now, once they accepted this, then Jesus began to teach them about how right through the scriptures, his death and his resurrection was foretold. Even in the law, in the prophets, in the Psalms, they all pointed to this, what was happened. And it says he opened up their minds In other words, he gave them understanding that can only be seen by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, in the story of John, we heard that John breathed on them, Jesus breathed on them, sorry, and said, receive the Holy Spirit. But here, he's giving them his understanding. And of course, this understanding is exactly what the Holy Spirit does. And he said that the repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. He promised them they would be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do this. And as we read the book of Acts, we see how boldly they got up and preached the news of Jesus. We see that today the message has gone right across the world. There are many places which don't like it and don't want to receive it, but the possibility of the message has gone right across the world. Now, what's the one thing that made these followers go boldly into the world with the message of Jesus, even willing to give up their own lives. It was that evening when they met the risen Jesus. They saw all the scriptures in a completely different light. They saw Jesus was alive and he'd been through death. They realized that the way to God was through Jesus and the power to change the world was the power of God through the Holy Spirit. They knew because they'd met him. This raises the question for us. Have we met the risen Jesus? That's what will make all the difference. We may not all have an experience of actually having an appearance of Jesus, but there are many who do. I know a young man who is very troubled and planning how to take his own life when Jesus suddenly appeared in front of him and stopped him. And he became a very passionate follower of Jesus because he said his very life depended on it. We remember the story of Paul, who was on his way to grab the Christians and throw them into prison. And he was stopped and confronted by Jesus. And he changed and became the great evangelist and teacher that um, the early church had. And you might be tempted to say, oh yeah, well that's back in those days. But that sort of thing doesn't happen now. Well, I'll tell you a few stories. The war in Gaza at the moment is a horrific thing. Ordinary people are being killed. Now, there was a Christian aid group who were caring for a group of Muslims who'd lost their homes and many of them lost many family members. And they were giving them food and aid. But they were also telling them about Jesus. That night, 200 of the men had exactly the same dream where Jesus appeared to them. And the next morning, they came back to these aid workers and they said, tell us more. And they all gave their lives to Jesus. It's not an isolated incident. Jesus is appearing to many Muslims in a dream. Now, it often has to be this way because the Christians are not allowed to preach in those particular countries. And Iran is one of the 
or one of the most, most difficult places to be a Christian. They're very, very, or they clamp down very quickly on anything that sounds like the Christian message. But there are some 100,000 people in Iran who have had a dream where Jesus appeared to them and told him that they should follow him. This is how Jesus does it when there is simply no other way for people to hear. Now we may never have had an appearance of Jesus, but we can still meet him in our time of prayer, in our worship. He'll make his presence felt to us, and if we are genuinely worshipping him, we can feel this sense of peace and a sense of joy that is just different from any human peace and human joy. Because what Jesus wants is relationship with us. Now we can't have relationship with someone we've never met. If Jesus is just an understanding in our heads, then it's quite legitimate to ask him to show himself to us. We don't know how he will, and we shouldn't have expectations of how it will happen, but to be open to the fact that he will, in some way, reveal himself to us. The story of Easter is the meeting the risen Jesus. He's conquered death, he's conquered evil, he's opened up the way for us to receive forgiveness for all our wrongdoing, and so be able to relate freely to the Father. Have you met Jesus, the risen Jesus?